Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing some more multiplayer. In the previous video, we got the changing scene working once everybody is readied up in the lobby and then they press start game. So in this video, we're actually going to get it to spawn the players in. I hope you're looking forward to it. Let's get started. So I'll be splitting this video up into the three usual steps. Step one, we'll be doing the coding and getting that out of the way. Then for step two, we'll be setting up the prefabs, everything in the scene to make sure it's all going to work. And then finally for step three, we'll test it. We'll make a built client. We'll go and run it in the editor, run it on the executable, and then see if we can connect and spawn our players in. I think that's everything, so let's get started. So the first thing to do is go to our network manager lobby. We're gonna add a new event. So a new public, oops, public static event action. And the action actually also has a type. It has a type of network connection. So that's our connection to a client. And we're gonna call it on server readied. So when we change scene, obviously different computers, different people on the connection might take longer to load that scene. And once they're loaded, it needs to make sure the connection's still there. And there's lots of other stuff happening underneath. And we need to know basically on the server when someone has readied, because we only want to start the game once everybody has connected. Now, obviously you might want, for example, a timeout, because what if someone doesn't connect? What if someone disconnects during the loading screen? Well, then you want to kick them or something. So we need to know when this event happens. And that means we need to raise it somewhere. So we're going to raise it. I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm just going to go over here and say, we want a public override. Uh, and then we want to go for the on server ready. Okay. Now, if you actually look here, this has some default connection to set the client ready or whatever. So once they are ready, so after we've done the base, then we want to raise our event. So on, oops, on server ready. I can't type on server readied question mark in case it's null dot invoke. And then we need to pass through a connection and we've got it right here. So con. So now from the network manager, we can actually uh, listen into it and know when a client is ready, but it's called on the server, remember, which is what we want. That's fine. Okay, so for the next script, the player spawn system, this spawn system is a network behavior, which means it's going to be spawned in by the server as well. So when we go to a game scene where the players need to spawn in, we will actually spawn in this game object with this script on. And what it'll do is it'll have reference to a player prefab. So, you know, what prefab to spawn. And we need to actually assign this to a client, to a connection. Um, then we have a list which is static, which means, you know, for every instance of the script, this, they share the same list uh, of transforms. So basically like positions in the scene, right? I know a transform is a position and a rotation and a scale. We just need the position really. Oh, and actually the rotation too, yeah. Um, so these are the different spawn points and we have a method down here. Actually, let's just do this. We have next index. So when a player spawns in, the server needs to increment this number to know where to set that next player. So when the first player connects, then they get set to uh, spawn points index zero, then the next player gets spawn point uh, index one, index two, index three, and so on. Okay, so we need these two methods, make sure they're static, to add a spawn point and to remove a spawn point. The reason why we can't really do it just in the scene beforehand and drag in the reference is because the actual player spawn system doesn't exist in the scene at, you know, design time, it gets spawned in later. So we need some objects, which we're going to have, they're going to be some spawn points, we'll write that script in a minute. And that's going to call these two methods, okay? So what we have is we have add spawn point, takes in a transform, it simply just adds it to the list and then makes sure the order is correct, okay? And then we also have a remove version, which, you know, just removes it. When this game object starts existing on the server, we subscribe to that event we just wrote in the server, right? The on server readied. So when someone is readied, we subscribe to spawn player. Okay, that's what we do when, when uh, someone readies. And then over here on destroy, so when this object gets destroyed, we want to actually uh, unsubscribe from the event. Okay, so we subscribe and unsubscribe. Then what actually is spawn player? Well, we take in a connection, which we get from the event. Remember, it passes through a network connection. And we say, okay, go get us the next spawn point, okay, based on the next index. Then we want to say, if it's null, there's an error return, don't, you know, don't break, basically. Uh, this should never be null, but it's just in case, okay? And then we say spawn in the player, so we instantiate the prefab, and we're going to spawn it at spawn points. Remember that a list of transforms up here. We're going to do it at spawn points, next index dot position, and spawn points, next index dot rotation. So we actually spawn at a spawn point facing the same way that the spawn point's facing. So for example, if your players get spawned on different corners of a square map, you can have them all facing inwards or wherever you want. And then over here, we actually need to spawn it on the other clients. So we say spawn, okay, we're spawning the object, and we pass in the connection as the second parameter because this player object that is being spawned in belongs to this player's connection. So you actually gain authority over it. And then once we've done all this, increase the next index so that the next player, when they connect, it calls this, calls here, 
spawn point, it gets the next index because that's been incremented, and then so on and so forth. So each player gets their own spawn point. Okay, so now under the game fields at the top, I've added a new one for a game object. So it's a prefab that has the player spawn system on. Okay, player spawn system. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to need this method. So we need uh, to override on server scene changed. So it's called on the server when a scene is completed. So as soon as we've loaded the scene, okay, now we can start doing stuff in the scene. So if the scene starts with scene underscore map, okay, so that means it's one of the levels, then we actually want to spawn in the player spawn system. And we don't pass in a second parameter of a connection. Because if you leave that blank, oops, if you leave that blank, then what it does is it means the server owns it, and that's what we want. So now, um, what it means is that all the clients will now have a spawn system, and it's owned by the server, which is exactly what we want. So now we're done with this, we just need to make the spawn point assigner thing. So what is a player spawn point? Well, it's a mono behavior. On awake, we add it to that list, so player spawn system dot add spawn point. We can call this method like this because it's static. And then on destroy, we want to remove it. And one other thing I'm going to add just to make our lives a lot easier is this. So this is a method that's called, so on Droid Gizmos happens in the Unity editor when you're looking at the scene. So if we actually, we could go test this right now. Remember, we're drawing a blue sphere at the position of this object with a radius of one. And then we're drawing a green line. Now you can customize this how you like. A green line from our position to uh, in the forward direction of ourselves. So wherever we're facing for two units okay two meters now if we actually go into the scene um we're just going to do this quickly to show you i'll go and make a 3d object uh what's this okay it's fine uh, let's go make a cube for example and we go over to the cube in the scene okay and if we just go add this spawn point okay it puts a blue circle around it. Obviously we wouldn't actually have a cube, it would just be a, an empty game object. And we have this green line. So then in our scene, we can have our different spawn points and we can see where they're facing and basically like where they are. Um, obviously feel free to tweak this as much as you like. You only see this in the scene view, not in the game view. But yeah, I think it really helps, especially when we're setting everything up in a minute. Okay, so step two, let's actually start making the prefabs and setting up the scene. So I'm gonna quickly chuck in a cube and I'm gonna make it maybe 20 by 20 and I'm gonna stick it at the center. Okay, let's do this. Um, did I reset it by accident? Okay, 20 by 20. So we've got this floor for our players. Okay, and then we're gonna, let's just call this the floor. And then we're going to go 3D object. We want to make a capsule, and this is gonna be our uh, player. Okay, then if we go to prefabs, actually we can't put in prefabs, it has to be spawned in. So we're going to our resources, spawnable prefabs. Okay, there's our player. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make an empty game object, stick this as the child. So actually this is gonna be player. Let's just undo that prefab. Okay. Because I want this to just be the visual, so just the capsule, okay? And then the root to actually be the character. So it's gonna have, for example, a character controller um, on it. And then <clears throat> we actually want to make the pivot be the bottom rather than the center. So if we take the model and we push it up by one unit, um, then we see the pivot is now at the bottom center. It just means we also have to push the character controller up by a unit. So now if I was to save that and just call it player underscore visuals or something. If I now save that as a prefab, delete it, and then I come down to my game and I just drag it onto the floor. Notice how it now actually places it on the ground because the pivot is at the base. So that's what we want. We want to like spawn players at these different corners, okay? So I'm gonna go quickly set that up. Okay, so now I'm done. What I did was I made an empty game object called spawn points and I made four empty game objects in that and I just added the spawn point component that we made. Okay, and I've positioned them at the corners facing inward. So you can see on the green lines, they're all facing to the center. So we've got eight to minus eight is the um, position on the X and, Z, uh, X and Z. And then the rotation on the Y is either 45 minus 45 or 135 minus 135, okay? Position it how you like, but if you're following along, those are the values I've used. I'm just gonna quickly go through them. You can pause and see the values if you wish to do so. Or you can go find them on GitHub, obviously. And notice how I've put zero here, then one over here, because if, for example, two players join instead of four, then I want them to be opposite each other rather than next to each other. Then as soon as a third person joins, they go here, and a fourth person goes over there. So that's the spawn point setup. We just now need to set up the network manager to actually spawn in the spawn system, and then we're done. So the spawn system is quite simple. We're just gonna make an empty game object and just call it maybe system, oh, let's just call it spawn system. I'm gonna reset it to zero. I'm just gonna add on the spawn system, okay? Now, because it's a network behavior, it needs a network identity, we've added that, and it needs a player prefab, so we're gonna add the player in here, okay? 
So now that's got reference to that, we can actually then make this a prefab. And one other thing we need to do is we need to make sure our player game object needs to also have a network identity on it. Network identity. And that's because the actual player object is going to be spawned in, remember? Uh, and make sure it's 000 when it's spawned. Um, yeah, because this is being spawned in and assigned to a client, it needs a network identity. Otherwise, we'll get an error. And now, if we go to our network manager, which is actually in the other scene, so we go back to the lobby scene, network manager, we need to pass it the player spawn system. So spawn, let's go to assets, spawn system. Okay, so now we've got the spawn system there, and I'm pretty sure that's everything we need to do. So I think we should go test it now. Okay, let's give it a test. So if I go do the normal host of lobby, ready up, join the lobby, ready up, press start game. Notice how we're in the scene. Now we can't see the other player because I didn't move the camera, but if we go into the scene view, we we'll actually see here are the two players. So we go to scene map. We've got player one over here, okay? And then the other player over there. So that's where the two spawn points are. If we added another player, they'd join here. I can actually test that if you want. So if we go to Unity, run it again. Okay, notice how on the other client, you can actually see here. Okay, we've got the player in that corner. If I join again. Oh, I can't join because they're not in lobby. So we'll actually do it real quick. I'll run. And I'll just close this, close this, host a lobby, and I'll join on two clients. One, two. Okay. Join lobby. Join lobby. Let's ready up. Okay, go back to Unity, start game, go to the scene. Now we have three people, look, one here, one there, one there, and then we would have a fourth one there. I can't be bothered, you know, doing that all again with a fourth player, but it works, okay? And that's exactly what we want. So in the next video, we can actually start having player input so that when we you know, go to here, I can start moving and I move my player. Then when I go over to the game view, we start moving our player here and so on. So if you guys want to see those kind of videos, let me know down below. But yeah, that's it for the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It'd help a lot. Leave a comment down below about what you want to see next or any questions you've got. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to John Selig, Liz Kimber, David McDermott, Josh Folsom, Bearded Eye, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Yoris Letter, Hades Zorko, Rene, Budere, and Mary Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help us out by following on any of those, checking any of those out, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.